My name is Taylor, I'm an art therapist, and I work with kids, teens, and adults, and using art in the creative process as a way to help people express themselves, to process difficult emotions, to work through difficult or challenging life experiences, and to also use art as a way to help us lower our feelings of stress or overwhelm or anxiety and to help us feel good. So with that, we're going to jump into our activity for today. So we are going to be making a memory Ferris wheel. And for this project, we are going to need a paper plate, a glue stick, a pair of scissors, and maybe an adult to help us use these scissors if we need it, a piece of white paper, and about four sheets of construction paper. And we'll also need some things to draw and color with. So I have colored pencils and markers here with me. You could use these, you could also use crayons, oil pastels, whatever you have at home, we can make work for this. So once you have all your supplies, meet me back here and we'll get started. All right, so to get started, we're going to start by prepping our paper. So first we're just going to grab three of our sheets of paper. I'm going to use these three. We are going to cut about one inch strips, one one inch strip from each paper. So I'm going to start at the bottom and start to cut, work my way up. I started cutting this one earlier, so it's pre-cut for me. Got one of these. Get my orange. Cut about a one inch strip on this one. And it's okay if they're not exactly the same as each other. We're just doing our best here. About, about an inch. And then my red. All right, so now that we have our three strips of paper, we're going to glue them onto our paper plate. So what we're going to do to glue them so that we get nice and even space is we're going to make, we're gonna glue them like this. So I'm gonna show you in a second. I'm just gonna get my pattern on my plate. So we're gonna make an X with two of our strips. And then we're gonna take our third strip and have it go right down the middle of the X. So it looks kind of like a star. So this is how it's going to look when we glue it down. So we're gonna do it one at a time. So I'm gonna start with my bottom piece, which is my red piece. So I'm gonna grab my glue stick and I'm going to put glue over underneath like pretty much the whole strip. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space at each end that I'm not gonna put glue on because that's gonna be sticking out on the side of the plate. So really rub the glue on. I'm gonna lay down where I had it. So this kind of diagonal, it's gonna be one side of my X that I had made. Use my fingers to press it down. And mine's still kind of like sticking up on the edge of my plate, so I'm gonna put a little bit of extra glue there. All right, so I got one strip down. And now I'm going to put my other strip down. So I'm gonna use my orange. I'm gonna make the other side of the X. So I kind of position it, see where I want it to go. Flip it over. I'm gonna cover it in glue. As you're working, just kind of checking in with yourself too, seeing how we're feeling today, how our mind's feeling, how our body's feeling, how our heart is feeling. Gotta put some of that extra glue on the ends, so it sticks on that bump on the plate. So I'm doing this on the, essentially the the, really the back side of my plate. If you did yours on the front side, that's okay too. It doesn't really matter too much. All right, so I have my X glued down. And now I'm going to take my last piece of paper, mine's purple, whatever color you're using, and I'm going to glue it right in the middle of my X. Got my glue on my strip. I'm gonna glue it right down the middle. Use my fingers to press it down. Move it up a little bit. Even little tips at the end. And again, with everything that we make in my kind of art making and my art therapy sessions, 
it's okay if it's not perfect. Perfect doesn't really exist. So we just do our best and we focus on how we feel while we make it, what we're, what we're making means to us, how it makes us feel. So that's what we're focusing on today. And with this project, this memory wheel, we're going to use this project to help us reflect on memories of our person that died or our pet that died. We're going to use it to help us reflect on why that person or pet was so important to us, things that we really appreciated or were grateful for about this person or pet, what they brought into our lives. And we're going to include it in our, in our wheel. And then what we can do is we can use this wheel to help us remind us of our person that died, our pet that died. It can help us when we're maybe feeling really sad or really overwhelmed, which are some pretty big feelings. Sometimes by looking at something that reminds us of the really beautiful and positive and amazing things that that person or pet brought to us, it can help us maybe feel a little bit more connected to them and maybe feel a little bit more at ease. So now that I have my design, on my thing, you can kind of see how it's starting to look a little bit like a Ferris wheel. We're going to make the base of our Ferris wheel. So I'm gonna grab my fourth sheet, which is my yellow sheet, and I'm going to make a triangle. So to make my triangle, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna hold it vertically. <laughs> we're going to go from one, we're gonna cut from one corner to the middle of the page, and from the other corner to the middle of the page to make a triangle. So just like this, I'm gonna go from one corner, cut to about the middle of the page, and then I'm gonna go from the other corner. And that is my triangle. Again, doesn't have to be a perfect triangle. All right, I'm gonna set my scissors down. And I'm gonna set my colored paper aside for now, just so I have a little bit more space. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to glue the base of my Ferris wheel to the back. So I'm gonna flip so my strips of paper are down on the table and I'm going to put some of my glue on the very top of my triangle. I would say cover about like two inches, about that much of the top of your triangle with your glue. And then we're going to take it and Stick it down onto the back of our paper plate. All right, so there we go, we got our Ferris wheel. So now we have to add our art and our memories to that. So to do that, we need to get our paper that we're going to be drawing on. So you should grab now your white piece of paper. We're gonna hold it horizontally like this, and we're gonna start by folding it in half one time, and then we're going to Fold it in half again. And we're gonna fold it in half one more time. And I should have like a little rectangle. And then we're gonna just we're gonna unfold it. We're gonna open up our paper back up. Now you should have eight little rectangles on your paper. We're gonna cut those out. So we're gonna grab our scissors again. Maybe our adult who's helping us. We're gonna cut along those lines that we just folded. Okay, finished cutting out my sheets of paper. Now I should have eight little rectangles. So on our memory Ferris wheel, there are one, two, three, four, five, six spokes that we're going to be attaching our pictures on we have eight pieces of paper. You're gonna have two extra in case maybe you want to start over or maybe you just wanna make two extra that you can just save for yourself. So I'm gonna have my paper right here and my stuff that I'm going to be drawing and coloring with. And we're gonna start by thinking about what are some of the things about our person that died, our pet that died, that we really feel so grateful for and we really appreciate about them. Just start to think about that for yourself. And as you're thinking about that, maybe notice when you think about that, where you feel that, that in your body, that gratefulness, that thankfulness. And close your eyes if you'd like, or just look down at the table. And let's also start to think about what are some of our favorite memories with 
our person or our pet? What are some things that when we think about that memory or that experience, that it makes us smile, it makes us feel happy, it makes us feel loved and supported? Think about that too. We're gonna try to pick six of those things. I bet there's a lot more that we can think of, but at least six. We have our, our six spokes that we're going to be creating. We're going to create six different pictures to represent those memories or those things about the person that you feel really grateful for. So we're gonna get started. So grab your paper, grab your, your drawing materials, and we're gonna to start to make some pictures of our memories and of our gratitude. And so I'm gonna be thinking about a person that I love that died. I'm gonna be making some pictures that remind me of them on mine. And you can do the same with me at, at home. And it's okay if you need to take some time to really think about how you wanna take the idea in your head and put it on the page. And so what we can think about is if we're feeling kind of stuck, just starting with a color, maybe even picking a color that represents how that person or pet made you feel. That can be a really good way to do it or a shape or some sort of design that just makes you feel connected to them. Or maybe if there's a memory, maybe just if you were to imagine that you just took like a picture of that memory, what would that picture be? And you can try to draw it as best you can here. And as you're working too, if you're working with other people that are also doing this, remember that each of our art is going to look different. How I make art is going to look different than how my friend's going to make art or how my sibling might make art and how I reflect might be different, how someone else reflects or even how I remember someone might be different than how someone else remembers someone and that's okay because each of us has a different experience and the way that we you know, feel grief and feel these really big feelings that come up when someone dies is going to be a little bit different for everyone. There might be some things that are the same, but it's okay if how you remember someone or how you feel might be different than someone else. That's okay. Just kind of noticing for yourself what your grief or your sadness or your hurt feels like. And also how your positive memories and how you reflect and remember someone feels like for you. And as you're making your pictures and you're thinking about your person that died or your pet that died, just noticing for yourself how you feel. Sometimes even if it's really positive memories that are coming up and that we're thinking about, it can also make us feel a little bit sad or a lot of it sad. And so just noticing for yourself and it's okay to feel whatever it is that we're feeling. Just giving ourselves some really deep breaths as we work. And really trying to connect with that feeling of, of gratitude and thankfulness for all that we got to create. But also giving ourselves a lot of love for whatever it is that we're feeling. The sadness, the anger, the heaviness. If you're feeling stuck on some things to make your pictures about, you can think about what were some things that you like to do with your person or your pet? Or some places that you used to go? What's something really silly or funny that happened with them? Was there something that you used to do often? Maybe a place you used to go out to eat? or a place you would go and play outside or do things outside. And again, as we're working to keep reminding ourselves that however it is that we're expressing ourselves today is more than enough. It's okay if something maybe feels like a little bit like a mistake. Something that I say a lot in my groups is there's no mistakes, just new direction. So maybe we made a mark or we 
put something on our page that we didn't really mean for it to go there. Instead of starting over, maybe we can think about, okay, how can I just make that work with my art? Maybe make something a little bit different. But if we really wanna start over, we can do that too. All right, once you're done with your six pictures, we can set aside our drawing materials. And now we're going to attach them to our Ferris wheel. So we'll grab your glue stick again. And you can play with where you want each of your pictures. They're each going to be glued down to one of the little pieces of the construction paper that we put on our paper plate. Kind of figure out what order you want them in, where you want them. All right, that looks good to me. So now I'm going to use my glue stick. I'm gonna put some glue just on the very tip of my construction paper. And then I'm going to cover it with my picture and press it down. I'm gonna do that for each of my pictures. So now my pieces are all glued down onto my memory Ferris wheel. So this is how mine turned out. And so I'm gonna look at mine, and I encourage you to look at yours and notice how your pictures make you feel, how it looks to see them all together. And then maybe if there's anyone at home that you wanna share what you made with and talk about your different pictures, that can feel really good too. And you can also think about where do you wanna keep your memory Ferris wheel? Where would be a good place that you could hang it or put it? That way you can come back to it and think about all these things about your person that died or your pet that really make you feel grateful and thankful for them and also really remind you of how amazing they were and how many great things they brought into your life. So you can think about that too. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you had fun creating and I hope to see you all again soon.